Good. So now, welcome to the deep part of the question. That says that explain the ISB standard setting process, so called the due process. That's the nickname for it, the due process. So that's the standard setting process. Now, with this process, it's the same when they are when they are solving, sorry, when they are updating a standard or they are bringing new standards, so they are the same. So that is it. So what are the, the procedure or the steps or the process that they go through? I have them, I don't have them in a particular manner. Okay, so, so uh, the first step, Will be the agenda consultation and plan of work. So the first step is to they have to seek for ideas. They have to come out with the idea, the reason for that standard. Seek for advice from two sources. So for the agenda consultation, they will go to the advisory council which is a sub-unit of the board. So go and then probably seek for advice. Ask them, hello guys, you want to bring out these standards. How should we go about it? Or give us your thoughts of it. Now, after the internal consultation, the board normally sends some document out to the member state or anybody that uses the IFRSS to probably jot down some issues or comments or suggestions that you have with regards to any of the standards. So if the board is consulting for ideas, then probably you will visit this kind of comment and take them into consideration. For instance, they can go and pick a comment on one of the standard and use it, depend on it to update it, to update that particular standard. So that's the agenda consultation. So either internally or externally by the documents or the comments received from the general public on the standard. And then after that, then they have to do what? Now plan the work. Start, okay, following the ideas that we have gathered so far. Now let's put the ideas into reality. Now let's draft uh, some skeleton. So the skeleton version, the plan work on paper, putting it on paper. Now we move on to the next stage. And the next stage is called discussion paper. Now with this paper, I call it skeleton version of the standard. After the plan of work, now they will actually put the bulletin, the key points on the standard. Now what are the issues, topical issues are we going to talk about? Now let's lay the point down. So if it's like IAS um, 10, it's about event after reporting period. What are the topical issues? Sorry. Yes, IAS 10, event after reporting period. Let's talk about the topical issue there. Okay, adjusting event, what should be dealt with? Non-adjusting event, and then we move on. So that's the discussion paper. And here, for the, for the discussion paper, the board, it is not mandatory for the board to publish it out. They may, voluntary, they may publish it out for comment. So take note. They may also decide to keep it. Now that's the second stage. So that's the discussion paper. Now, let's assume that the discussion paper was published. So following the comment received from the general public, they will now prepare the full version of the standard, we call it the draft. So we call it exposure draft. That's the draft version of the standard. So following the comment, now they will now graduate to what? The discussion paper. Now when they go to the, sorry, they will, they will graduate to the exposure draft. When they go to the exposure draft, yeah, it's mandatory for them to publish it to the general public. Yes, they have to publish it. To the general public okay. for a review so that they will 
submit their comments. Because uh, there was a situation whereby you'll be there and then finally, we didn't uh, see the input. You don't have any input in the standard setting or your idea. You will just be there and then they'll put something together and then they will just probably impose it on you. So you have to see what you are going to accept in the future or the standard that you are going to. So that if you have any issue, you can still push it in and then they will take it and then work on that. So with the exposure draft, that one is mandatory for the board to send to the general public for a comment. Good. Now, following the comments, so we are moving on to the next step. So the next step will be the revision of the exposure draft. The exposure draft should be revised based on the comment received, following the comment received from the general public. Sometimes it needs to be amended if the comments and then if the comments need some bit of um, amendment so that is it or uh, sometimes to the board the members of the board have to probably vote on it so if still okay. the majority suggests what amendment so go ahead and then amend the standard so they are going to revise it, revise until the final one is what is being accepted. So following the final one, what do you think will happen? We are moving to the next step. So the next step will be what? Issue of what? New IFRSs. Oh yes, because after the final revision, then the new IFRSs is issued. And once new IFRSs is been issued, what do you think will happen? They have to adopt it. So. Adoption of the new IFRS, that's the next step. Good. And then after the adoption, finally, then the post implementation review. Yeah, the interpretation committee have to probably come around together with the board, members of the board, and then make sure that the requirements of the standards are being followed or applied as stated in the standard. Other than that, some entities, some countries, they'll probably have their versions of the standards, of the requirements. So here, the subcommittee of the board, that's the interpretation committee, should be having lectures, seminars, conference, workshop, to probably explain the specific requirements in the standards. So that, first of all, they will check whether you are, you are going by the requirements in the standards. If not, then they have to probably enlighten you on the standards for you to get it. Good. So these are the standard setting process. They are about seven in number. So that's the agenda consultation and plan of work. Step two. Discussion paper, step three. Exposure drafts. You say? I say exposure draft. Good, exposure draft. Step four. Revision of what? Uh, revision of the draft. Of exposure draft. The draft after comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then. And then the issue the of step. new IFRS. Yes, new IFRSs. And then the next step. And then the post implementation review. Hey, the adoption. Hey, sorry, adoption before. Oh, you have to adopt it before you, before they come for the post implementation review. Make sure that they've got the requirements right. So, so that is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are done with the the D aspect. Now we go to the E. Outline and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of international harmonization of the financial reporting standards. So what are the advantages? So if the financial reporting standard IFRS is being harmonized all over the world, what do you think will be the good news of it? What will be the advantages of this? So first, it will improve what comparability because financial statements prepared will easily be compared 
because the basics are the same. The IFRSs you use, the rules you use, the requirements are the same. So you can compare financial assessment of companies from different countries easily because the IFRS is the same everywhere. That is it. And then it can also talk about transfer of staff. It can let public transfer of staff. It can move staff from Ghana to that of South Africa. If the IFRS is the base of reporting is the same. Accountant in Ghana can also be what? An accountant in that of South Africa. Yes, why? Because in Ghana, you are going to report using the IFRS. South Africa, the IFRS. So you won't face too many challenges. That is it. Normally, this normally happens in the audit firms. Normally, you see that they are moving their partners from Ghana to that of Nigeria and other part of the continent. Yes, yes. It's because the standard of reporting are the same. And likewise, the standard of auditing too are what? the same. So the same. that is it. And also talks about reduction of audit costs. Because if we prepare the financial statement using the IFRS, that's the internationally acceptable or internationally recognized standards, uh, it will reduce the, the audit time or the time that the auditors will spend on the work or will spend on the auditing during the auditing process. Now, why is the audit time being reduced? Because the auditors will not spend much time on the work because already you are using the international standard. Unlike somebody who is not using the international format, that one they have to now convert your format to suit the international, and that will take probably some time. So, when they reduce the time, the lesser the time, the lesser the audit cost. All other things being equal. Good. So that is it. And then you can also talk about easy access of finance. Oh yes, if you prepare your financial statement using the IFRS, you can get access to finance easily. Because the international financial institutions probably require the use of IFRS often than any other uh, accounting standard. So that is it. And then expansion, you can also expand quickly, easily to oversee probably without any reporting challenges because the standard of reporting is the same. Good. Now let's probably discuss about the few challenges or the limitations, the disadvantages. That's the barrier to international harmonization. We can talk about one, the limitation here. It's also called the barriers um, of international harmonization. We normally pick some of the difficulty that we have with the standard to serve as barrier for the international harmonization, or it will limit the spread of the I Paris is all over. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, we can talk about one different legal system. Yes. Most countries have different legal system that might conflict or clash with the IFRS, the requirement of the IFRS. So if it conflicts with the requirement of the IFRS, they may not be willing to adopt or accept the IFRS. So in that matter, it will probably serve as a barrier to the international harmonization. Compare the culture of Indian to that of uh, Ghana, to that of China, to that of South Africa. You can see this there'll be some level of what differences, even to that of Egypt. 
So if you are going to use one set of IFRS or one set of accounting standards, this legal system might not might not support it. And due to this, many countries will not accept the IFRS because if their local laws or the legal legal system of the country does not support the IFRS system, do not accept it. Yes, for instance, US is a rule-based approach, but the IFRS is a principle-based approach. So there's a great contradiction between the system in the US and the system behind the IFRS. So such a country will find it very difficult to adopt or to accept the IFRS. Good. Then you can also talk about culture crash. Culture. Once I talk about Liga, up to second hand with culture crash. Culture. Or culture differences. Check the culture of the country. It's different. And this culture have a way translating to their reporting or their report. So if their culture conflicts with the system of reporting offered by the that of the IFRS, uh, such a country will not go for it because some country hold their culture in high esteem. Countries like China. Yeah. China, for instance, they will make the spoons for you, but they will still prefer to use their sticks to eat. Yeah. That chopstick. Is that? Is that? I was saying chopsticks. Yes, the chopsticks. Though they can make they can make what more than and then nine spoons. So you are using words, they are chopping sticks. That tells you that their culture, they value it. So if this will have influence in their reporting, do you think they, they will accept the IFRS? No. That will serve as what barrier of the international harmonization or the disadvantage of it. Good. You can also talk about the need of the developing countries, need of developing countries. The truth of the matter is that the developing countries don't need IFRS to develop their economy. That's the truth. Because if the country, you are hungry. Everybody in a country is hungry because there's no food. Food is not there. The country is not surviving. Will you get time to go and report on your financials? No. Will you go and report on your financials? No. So we have to fight for the basic needs. And the basic needs of every country or of the developing country is not IFRS. Yes. It's not IFRS. When you go to the advanced country, such country, the basic needs are there. Security is there. So what they need is what? They just have to advance. But now we are the primary sector. We've not advanced yet. So that's the, that's the one uh, major disadvantage of most of the developing economies. Yes. They will go in for the service they will expand their service sector, forgetting about the, the backbone, the backbone of the economy, which is the, the agriculture. Agriculture, that's the primary sector, form the backbone of the economy. So each and every country should develop their, their agriculture base first. Then moving into their industry, and finally, expand to the service. So it's a gradual process. And then most of the developing countries, they are the primary stage. So moving on to the secondary or the service, you do find it difficult. So they will not accept the IFRS. That is it. So what 
networking companies need is not eye viruses. They need basic needs. Good. So that is it. Now you can also talk about the need of financial reporting by country. In some country, you only prepare financial statements if you owe what the, the government or you owe tax or you are going to pay tax or or you are a company limited by what their company's code good so each and every country or sector have a different purpose of financial reporting one set of rules might not be able to guide all these needs in a way serve as what barrier then you can also talk about um, nationalism. Yes, nationalism. One country is not ready to accept other countries' item. Oh yes, this thing is coming from this country. I'll never allow it because I'm not in good terms with them some years back. For instance, US have not accepted the IFRSs because the IFRS is coming from where? UK, right? Yes. Meanwhile, IFAC to IFAC is to is saying that the IFRS is not coming from UK. It's coming from IFAC. That's the International Federation of what Accountants, which is made up of what states, mm -hmm. countries, member countries, and what institutions. So it's not like uh, one country. No. But still, US is saying no. I mean, for that matter, now a team of professionals have been taxed to analyze the, the US gap mm -hmm. to determine the difference between the US gap and the IFRS so that automatically, so that they would delete the, these differences from the IFRS so that automatically there will not be any difference between the IFRS and then the US gap so that at least there will be one the national accounting standards that is it i hope you get it yes, please. good that's the convergence of the u.s gap and then ifrs the gap and then ifrs good so that is it now you can also talk about lack of strong accountancy body lack of a strong accountancy body might serve as barrier for international monetization. Now, accountancy body, if any country does not have, if a country does not have a strong body that will enforce the IFRSs, you won't even go and adopt it because each and every company will have its own remix, its own version mm -hmm. of the treatment. No. And then how to enforce it and now thank god that ghana we have ICA. yes they are there to what enforce the ifrs in the country good and they can also talk about costs of training and retraining if one country is in economic crisis and need public funds and consider the cost of training its people to understand the IFRSs. If that cost perceives the benefit or the revenue or the income, you might not probably accept it. So these are the various words, the various barriers to international monetization. That is it. Good. Now we will move on to the next question. Good. We can go straight to the next uh, question, question two. Target fruits limited. So let's go to the requirement. Required. Prepare brief notes for the finance director addressing each of the following and using the ISB framework as source of reference. A, 
identify potential providers of funds or finance for Target Truth Limited and their information need or information requirements. In respect of the financial statement, good. So here, what are they asking? Mm. So we should identify the, so we look for the users of the accounting information. Good, but here and they have been specific. There are so many users, but here the specific ones are what? Potential oh, the, finance. Uh, finance. So investors. Good. And then uh, shareholders. Good. And then uh, bank, bankers as well. Or the banks or financial institutions. Okay, so, good. So with this, we can talk about owners, investors, shareholders. They are one. Mm -hmm. Owners, investors, shareholders, they are in the same group, so the same point for it. And then their information need. What's their information requirement in respect of the financial statement? Um, they are looking at the profitability of the company. They will look at the, the financial position of the company, mostly about the profitability, to see whether they can get higher dividends or they can make profits out of the investment. Exactly. That they are so first, first thing they want to know, the requirement is what? Profitability. That's the first thing to look out for. Second, they will consider their return. Good. So let's go to the ball. Good, 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 good. So first, profitability. Second, they will look out for the return. Oh yes, because now that I know that the, the business I've invested, they've made profit, what's my return? You have to give me return. So first of all, the profitability. To return. What again? Assume that you are owner, you've invested in some business and then now they prepare their financial statement. What and what and what will you require? Or what are you going to read? Which section are you going to determine first? Third one, the viability of the entity. That is the viability. How viable the entity is. Like, has the entity expand, expanded? Because when I started investing in this company, they are what? Something small. Today, they are like this because my dividend will be big. So you consider all those factors and see. 20 years ago, you are still like the same. Then you are not expanding. So we take the decision whether to join funds or to continue. That is it. Now you talk about bankers or loan creditors. That's the next uh, finance providers. Bankers. Or like you can talk about the bank or loan creditors, or the bankers. The bank, loan creditors. Loan creditors, or lenders. Lenders, yeah, the same. So that is it. And what do you think will be the information need? Um, they are looking at the, they will look at the, Asset vis-a-vis -vis the liability of the company. Your asset and liability. At, Good. So yes. what? They will check your your credit worthiness or your liquidity. Your yes. ability to settle them as and when yes. they loan for you, right? So they will check your liquidity or your credit worthiness. Your credit was worthiness. Good. Your ability to pay your liabilities as and when they for you. That's the first thing that they will check, and that's the asset and liability. Because do you have enough asset to combat your 
presence or your liabilities. That is it. What is the second thing we check? Yeah, look at the viability of the project that we are going into or the reason for the credit. Is that? They will look at the viability of the project that you are going into of the business or the business to see whether it can stand the test of time. I don't know how to go. Uh, I don't know if I'm making check, sense. Yes. They will probably check your survivor, your continuity, because they will know that yes. if you will survive, that's where you can be able to repay their their facility or their loan for them. Yes. So the survivor, good. They will check your survivor. You're going concerned. And they're going concerned, there are so many ways of checking. They use your profits. Whether what you're going to probably use their funds for to be profitable before they will give the loan to you. But that one, I'll pick that one last. That point will probably be the last one. Because the bank first they'll consider whether you can repay back their loan. Even if you can repay back the loan. Yeah. You can you are still making consistent losses. They don't mind, they'll still give the money to you. I'll be good at Okay. Uh, that is it. Now the second one we will we'll consider whether you can keep within the interest payment and then the other terms and conditions. So whether you can keep within the interest payment. So keep within. Uh, interest payment. Interest payment. And what? The uh, other terms and condition. Yes. So, entity, when they pick your facility after paying the principal, that like you see them again. And then the last one, the profitability. That's if these two are not there. Profitability. Because if we are profitable, the bank will not share the, your profit, will not share the profit with you. So it just as a software guarantor or as collateral to pack the loan. It suggests that you will be available or you will survive to pay the the loan. Good. Now let's look at the third one. Source of finance for Target Foods Limited. Good. Third one will be what? Creditors, right? Yes. Creditors. So that is it. Now with the creditors. What do you think will be their information needs? Um, their information needs. They are. They will look at. Um, oh, how do you even call this thing? There's a term for it. <laughs> okay. How fast you can resell and you can how fast you can sell and, uh, and pay them back. Oh, okay. So day two one. They look at your your credit rate turnover or your liquidity okay. your credit worthiness oh yes can you pay them on time that's what they're looking for because it's an every supplier is looking for where you can get this money quick like as you said you can only Mm -hmm. Pay back if you, if your turnover is out, they are good. If you can sell your goods on time and get the funds to pay me, yes. Some of them today will not allow you to go and sell the goods before you pay them all. No. What if you go? What if you go and sell and then they don't buy the goods? They've lost them, eh? so they will not agree. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you check, if you check their days, they will tell you they have to receive their money before you go and sell your goods or before you receive the money. So that is it. Then two, also check whether you can keep within the terms and condition of supply. So the terms and condition. Good. The terms and what conditions involved. 
with it. Yes. When I ask you to probably order for this amount so that we can be in good business or in, be in good terms, and you are not going by that, you order the amount that you want. That was not the condition. So we also look at it. I know of this will be stated or they will analyze it from your financial statement. And then the third one, they also consider your survivor, the survivor of the organization, the survivor of the entity, whether you're going to stay for the next financial year so that they also get their odds, their daily bread from you. That is it. The opportunity. So these are the potential providers of funds for Target Food Limited. Good. I guess I, we've not read the there's now. No, 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 no. He said? I said no. Yes, but still we have answered the question fully. Yes. Yes, I was wondering. <laughs> Exactly. In fact, uh, for financial reporting questions or for any question at all, Fred is saying that go by the right approach, the requirement first, additional information, trial balance or the financial statement, the right or the rough approach. When you use that, it will probably save you. Yes, the requirement first. But as soon as you read the requirement, we just provide some clue to you on how to go by it. Uh -huh. But if you start reading this now, sometimes you may throw yourself away. After reading a requirement, you give it specific. Yes. Because if you start reading this now, everything, any answer can come in mind. So what's the meaning? So that, that implies, it means that you make a, so many assumptions, by the time you finish reading this now, you have about billions of assumptions in your head. But if you read a requirement first, as and when you are reading, you are going straight to the specific. And even sometimes, if it's calculation, you just go to the formula, go straight, pick the items, you are done. The rest are not needed. Good, so now let's continue with it. Okay. Now, when you go to the B part, it's explain the terms, performance, and position, and identify which of the financial statements will assist the user in evaluating performance and position. So what is performance? Explain the terms performance and position and identify which of the financial statements will assist the user in evaluating performance and position. Okay. Yeah. So um, the financial statement that would, would, would be able to assist the user to evaluate the performance of the company will be that of the income statement. Uh, and then, because the, uh, the income statement states the trading, how you're able to trade, how you're able to manufacture and sell, and then the expenses okay, within the period. Okay, I can highly hear you. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, it's okay now. It's okay, okay. Yeah. I'm saying that um, the income statements will help you to determine the performance of the entity within a financial period or within a, a, a year where okay. you know how the company has performed in terms of its sales or manufacturing and then expenses for the year whilst the balance sheet, uh, the statement of an position or balance sheet will tell you about the position of the entity oh, okay uh, so the assets and the liabilities good in fact, the question was pregnant. You've answered only one, one session. But well, as you explain the term <laughs> performance, what is performance? Then what is position? Okay. Then when you're done, tell us the statement that will, will help you to analyze performance and position. So it's like, first of all, performance is this, position two is this. So what is performance? Okay. Okay. Should I answer? Okay? Yes, any idea. In fact, performance just uh, measures your profit or loss that you probably end yes. for the year. Your performance is 
in terms of your profit or loss, your trading, from your trading activities, your operations for the year, your profit or loss that you determine. When you talk about financial position, there are the claims that you have due to or due from, yes, the assets, your liability, and your equity. These are your position. So that's it. How do you get it? Yes, please. Okay. So that is it. Now let's go to the last question. Oh, there's someone there. Now, indicate why for decision-making purposes, the financial statements alone are insufficient. Okay, indirectly, we are asking you for the limitations of financial statements. So for decision purpose, indicate why for decision purpose, decision-making purpose, the financial statement alone are insufficient. So, mm -hmm. um, this one, I think uh, there's only one reason that I have in my head. So maybe you have, you may be able to explain it more. But is the there? reason is that I said I only have one particular statement, which I think is only what I have in my head. Oh, okay. So the statement is that. Uh, financial statements only gives us uh, about the performance and then the position of the financial statement and it talks about figures it doesn't talk about the social or culture or whatever I like that. Of it, but it's, it's purely important it is purely so, focused on figures and money uh -huh. exactly without attributing other aspects of life to it good so it means that the financial statements they are insufficient because the financial statement does not provide information about what does not provide non-financial information about the company, non-financial information. And trust me, the financial information that you see in the financial statement, they are not on their own. Majority of them depend on the non-financial good. So if we depend on the financial statement alone to make decisions, it is insufficient because your decision might not probably be valid. You have to also consider the other information. That's the non-financial. Example is what you mentioned. The good public image. That's the good goal of the organization. The good image. Also have to consider the quality of product that you produce. You have to also consider the customer service. Consider the employee morale or motivation. All of these are not on the financial statement. So they place some challenge on the financial statement. That is it. Good. You can also talk about this. The financial statements are subject to what? Manipulation. Window dressing and big bath accounting. Subject to what? Manipulation. Window dressing and big bath accounting yes because when they are manipulated don't depend on it solely depend on other information like if you have two information about one item if one is lying the other one will not lie right so that at least you have a, a clear picture of it don't just depend on one section and then you make a decision So the financial statement uh, is subject to manipulation. So it means that the decisions that we are going to also make also be what manipulated. Good. Good. And then the financial statement does not provide basis for predicting the future. The financial statement does not provide basis to predict the future or to assess the future. Meanwhile, for the non-financial information, it gives us, it presents some information. For instance, if you take management accounting, in, management accounting provides information about the past, about the present, 
and the future. Wow, that's how management accounting is very good. Provide information about the past. Cost, calculation of the cost incurred. Present, decision, selling price, future, making forecasting techniques, budgets, all of this. So that is it. It's because the information in the financial statements are based on recorded figures. They are recorded. So recorded figures normally will not predict the future accurately for you. For instance, if a company declared profit 2019 and in that company was the best, as even that this 2022 will be the best, who well, are 2019 was a profit to look at 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. Good. Hmm. So that is it. What again? And that's all I have. <laughs> Good. You can also talk about uh, for the for the financial statement prepared, it's subject to personal influence. Personal influence in the sense that most of the items in the financial statement are estimates. Yes, yeah, some of the items or most of them are estimates. And you know, estimates, everybody can, or when they give their channel, they will estimate differently. When you pick probably three or more accountants, they will come with different estimation based on their own judgment, right? Yes. So though the IFRSs are there, they've used IFRSs to prepare, but sometimes the IFRSs give room for estimation. Yeah. Like you buy an asset, the cost is 50,000, and then you are going to calculate depreciation. Someone will use IFR, someone will use reducing, someone will use a straight line. And even it's some fine. the number of years, the number of years, someone said no, me 10 years, I don't want to say no, five years. Okay, so it's subjective. It's subjective. So for decision making purpose, for the financial statement is not uh, sufficient. Go extra. Go extra. That is it. Good. So that is it. Now we are done answering the questions, so without reading the scenario, let's go read the scenario and see what's there. That is it. Just go straight forward to answer the question and you are done. He said that Target Fruits Limited, a here for said based fruits, bottling and canning company, is looking to expand its operation. The directors are hoping to increase the range of preserved fruit products. And in doing so, we'll need to invest, or in so doing, we'll need to invest in new equipment. We are also hoping to open a new facility in eastern region of the country, near the fruit farms of Somenia. The, the finance director has been asked to prepare a resume of a financial performance of the company in order that the possible providers of finance can assess the future potential of the company. The finance director wants to address all issues in her resume and has asked for your assistance. So that was the question. Hmm. I hope you get it. Yes, please. Okay, so probably you can move on to the next question. The next question is an interesting question. That's Dave's. Dave's and Sales Limited. Good. So let's go to the comment and see. As usual. Using ISB framework, define the term assets, liability, and recognized. Wow, what is recognized? That's the question. 
<laughs> that's the only one I'll have issue with. <laughs> and that's the straightforward one. Mm. And that one, like, recognized. Recognition. Mm. Re- it's the same as recorded, reflected. So, as define the term recorded. Okay, so when something is recorded, it has, it has been, you have to recognize to record. In fact, the word recognize means are you going to record it? Are you going to treat it? Are you going to reflect it? Are you going to include it in your books or in the financial statement? That's the meaning of the word recognition. Okay. Uh huh. So, recognize it means that the transaction has been what recorded. Our recognition is the process by which transactions are recorded in the financial statement or reflected in the books. How do we get that? Yes, please. Now they say define as a defined liability. They don't need any explanation, the definition that they want. So we we'll go straight and define assets and define liability. So asset is what? Asset is economic resources owned and controlled by what? The entity from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. That is it. And then liability to present obligation arising from past event from which future economic benefits will move out of the entity. Full stop. And then define recognized. That's all. Still we don't need still we don't need scenario. Okay. B. Prepare brief notes for Carol Roberts, discussing whether the above results, whether the above results in an asset or a liability, and whether or not they should be recognized in the financial statement. Good. Note, you are not required to refer to a specific IFRS that may be relevant. No. Just base it on what? ISB conceptual framework. Good. Framework. Now, for the B part, we need the notes. We have to go and read the notes. Yes, because it's a referral. Good, so let's go and read the notes. Now, Dave's and then Sales Limited, that's DNS, is a well-known publisher of children's educational books. The finance director, Karen Roberts is a known for her commercial acumen rather than her technical ability. She is therefore seeking your advice on two particular accounting issues. First, value of head of publishing. So DNS Limited have recently appointed a new head of publishing, Jane. Let's say, Jane recently worked, worked for a key competitor, that's Serage and Helge, PLC. Jane's is extremely popular among the leading authors in the market. And it's sure that, and it's sure to attract the service of a certain artist currently. Sorry. And it's sure to attract the service of what? Service of certain authors currently working for S and H PLC. Carol believes that Jane is therefore of great value to their company, that's DNS Limited. And that such a value should be therefore be recognized in the balance sheets in a form of what assets. So an asset. A, yeah. So can no, they okay. record an asset? No. Okay. Now, why? Or oh, okay, why? Um, why? Because I don't. It, it cannot be measured. How do you quantify? The the value of of J of of uh, okay. gene. Perfect. So perfect. Measurement is an issue. Yes. Yes. Perfect. So in first of all, of money, 
first of all, to answer this question, we first of all tell uh, the finance director that to record an asset in the books, certain criteria should be met or certain conditions should, must be fulfilled. And that's the location criteria. And here they are. One, there must be probable that economic future economic benefits embodied in the head of publishing will move to the publishing company. Two, the cost involved can be measured reliably. The cost of the head of publishing can be measured reliably. So that reliably. Good. Now, after you have quoted this, then go further. With reference to the above condition, although the first one has been satisfied, although future economic benefits will move to the entity, the cost of the head of publishing cannot be measured reasonably or reliably. Yes. And once the cost cannot be measured reliably, we cannot record an asset. So when you go through all this procedure, before you give us the final answer, even to some extent, if your final answer is wrong, your condition will be marked for you because the condition might not be wrong. Okay. How do we get that? Yes, please. How do we get that? Yes, please. Good. So that is, so they can't record an asset. But the question is, how should how are they going to record it? How are they going to record it? How are they going to record it? So an asset. They cannot record an asset. Probably if it, he has been poached. If he has been poached, then the poaching fee should be probably expense in the PNL for the year that they incurred it. Yes. So that is it. Good. Then we move on to the second part, provision for alleged breach of copyright. Now let's see. Carol is aware that Poppy Anderson, Poppy Anderson, one of the DNS limited authors, is being accused of including ideas in her text that have been previously been published. Kara is certain a legal case. Kara is what certain a legal case will ensue, and therefore being prudent and wish to recognize what a liability in account now for any damages that are likely to what arise. Good. This is. A provision. A provision is what is the liability with uncertain timing and amount. Provision mm -hmm. is what? Liability with what? Uncertain timing and amount. Mm -hmm. Good. It's like it, it, it's something that you pay for, but you don't know when exactly you are going to pay that amount. And even if you know when exactly, you don't even know the amount. You don't have control over the amount. The circumstances will tell. Good. So the question is, how do you record or treat on what basis? So here too, this is a provision. This is a provision. Or oh, I want to recall liability. Good. You can no. print it from liability session or provision session. Now, to record liability, Carol, to record liability, two conditions should be in place. In this case, there must be what? Present obligation. Yes. There must be present obligation. Now, the issue is that this is not a liability, it's a provision. We want to make a provision for the future. Good. Liability is the one that you have incurred it now. That's why they actually define liability first. But liability is a present obligation. So if you say liability, it must be a present obligation. Good. Provisions, from past events. Provisions are certain liabilities, just that, just that the amount and the time is unknown. Good. So to record provision, 
two conditions or three should be in place. One, there must be what present obligation. So here, let's analyze. Is there any present obligation? No. Is there any, any condition that suggests that uh, the company is owing someone? No. Present obligation. Yeah, the present obligation can arrive from three, three um, ways. One, legal or contractual. That's the first two. Legal or contractual. Or it can also be constructively, constructive. Each and every time your past action suggests that whenever you copy somebody's uh, text, they will always see you. Every day they see you, so you'll be paying. Even if they don't see you, cry you yourself, man, go and give them some money. So it will become your habit. Some money. That's the... That's a constructive. Good. So here, is there any present obligation? That's the first point. Second, it must be possible that it will result to a future outflow of future economic benefits, like funds to move. Oh yes, because you are going to pay. And then finally, a reliable estimate can be made for provision. We use the word reliable estimate. For a liability, we use the word a reliable amount. The amount involved can be determined reliably. That one, there's no estimate. But, so that is it. So before he can record, before he can record liability in the books or provisions in the books, these three conditions should be there. And all the three should be there. Even if one is not there, you can't record it. And here, the amount involved, what, what estimate? What would be the estimate? Here, the estimate, it should come from their legal team or their lawyers to advise them that normally the legal suits, if it's copyright, the basis, the minimum is 1,000 Ghana cities. And even we are 60% certain of it. And even before you can take 60% of it. Good. So here, though the second condition has been satisfied or will be satisfied, that's the to result the outflow of what future economic benefit mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when we settle the damages, funds will move from us. But the first one and second one has not been fulfilled. There's no present obligation. As and now, you are not owing anybody. They've not seen you. Yeah. So that is, if the case is pending and everything suggests the, the case is pending and then legally, then we can say, that, well, legally, then there'll be some what? There'll be obligations on you. Good. And that one, the reliable estimate should be made. So here, Carol cannot record a provision. But instead, it should what? Disclose it in the footnotes to the users for them to be aware that at the time that you are preparing the financial statements, these are the material transactions. We have a pending court case if the case is pending. So that is it. How we get it? Yes, please. Then move on to the fourth question. Uh, the first question says that briefly states and describe five main weakness of the historical cost and a current convention in financial reporting. Five main weakness. So talk about the, the weakness of what the historical costs. If I'm using the original cost, what is the weakness? Yes, that's a lot of weakness. You cannot, uh, it does not provide the true value of the organization, the current value, because your asset and your liability will be stated at the, at the very old prices or values or at the original amount. Good. So that's the first point we will talk about. And then... Uh, so you said it does not 
reflect the current value uh, of their reflect, as not reflect the the current value of the organization. Okay, sir. Good. Now, assets may be understated or overstated. Yeah. Ideally, if that asset loses value, it may be what's overstated. If that asset appreciates, it may be what's understated. <laughs> Like you bought a land at East Legon 25 years ago at the value of 10,000 Ghana cities, and you are still recording that land at 10,000 Ghana cities in your book. So, yeah, that's that to be what underestimated. Why? Because today, 10,000 worth of land that was 15 years ago, today the value will be over, over 50,000 plus. At what is level? So take note of the measurement basis. Then the current cost measurement. With the current cost convention, it has a lot of advantage, but few weakness. The major challenge is that it required what expertise, techniques. It's expensive as compared to the historical cost. It's expensive. So it's as expensive. You said? You said it's expensive. Yes, it's expensive as compared to the historical cost. And it's a bit complex. Yeah. But it required market survey to know your mar the market index of your, of your assets and liabilities, especially if your assets and liabilities are paired against an underlying item on the market. And then for you to determine the value. Even sometimes the fair value are not even supposed to be determined by the accountants. It's by what a qualified independent valuer. He has to determine the fair value. So it means they have to go extra and when employ what a professional valuer. So that's a difficult. Now let's go to question five. But the measurement basis don't uh, probably take it slightly. They like asking it, so you can see that it, it will repeat itself. Now, question five is ICA 2011. A is the May and B is the November. So, A say outline the rule and then the structure of the International Accounting Standard Board, that's ISB. The rule and what? The structure. The structure. The Right? So the functions of the board, uh, probably they have three functions, but one of them is the major one. That's the key one. So you have to state that one before any other function. But the key rule, so the major rule that they form, that they perform is what? Is to prepare an issue of the IFRSs. So that's the rule that they perform. That's the major one. But the other rules that they perform is they also they issued what their conceptual framework. So that's why you say ISB conceptual framework. And then finally, they also report mm -hmm. to the IFRS foundation. Then you draw the structure of the board. The structure of the board nicely. Yes, of the I think I have to go and read on it. Uh, is so it? Can come as a full question. Is it? Is, that means I have to go and read on. I, that means I have to go and read on it. I you, if not uh, gone through that one. That's a regular. I've gone through. I'm saying that I have to take it serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, hey, I've done that. I'm saying that I have to take it serious. Oh um. yes, you have to. Yeah, that's us. In fact, every bit of the video is a sensitive part that we normally bring out. Good. Okay. So then I'll leave that section for you. Well, let me go to the B part. 
Measurement is a key criteria and opinion financial reporting standards. Explain the four measurement bases proposed by the ISB conceptual framework for Maxwell. Now look at the way this question is going to repeat itself over the years. This is ICA November 2011. So that's the, the measurement basis, the four. One, the historical cost, current cost, realizable or settlement value, present value. These are the four. Do we explain them? Right. When you are explaining them, this is how we want the answer should be. One. The answer, we need only three sentences for each of them. If you go by one and three. One, if you mention the historical cost, tell us in general one sentence. Okay, historical cost says that transaction or item should be recorded at the out, original amount, original figures, then tell us asset, how asset should be recorded. Okay, how liability should also be recorded, that's all. So assets should be recorded at their original amount in care to acquire them. Liability should be recorded at what? The amount required to settle them at the what? In an ordinary cost of business, you are done. You go to current. Current cost is that item should be recorded or the value of the transactions or the item should be the current value of that item. So it starts assets. Assets should be recorded. Assets should be recorded at what? At, at the, the current value, value of it. The value, the fair value, market value, the going rate. That is it. It goes to liability. Now it says that liability should also be recorded at the amount currently required to settle them. It doesn't matter the old value. What matters is what the current value. That's the current measurement. Then move on to the realizable value. It's realizable. Realizable value slash what? Uh, the settlement value. So either realizable or settlement. Realizable goes with assets. And settlement goes with what? Liability. Oh, yes, because you can't realize your liability. No. You have to settle liability, you have to sell an asset. So this uh, the explanation. Assets should be recorded at their realizable value. That's the disposal value. How much you you probably obtain after the sale. Settlement. Liability should be recorded at the amount that required to settle them. Yeah, then. We go to present value. There are four measurement bases. One, two, three and four, present value, present value. He has the name suggest present value of the cash flows of the item should be used. If it's an asset, asset should be recorded as what? The PV, that's the present value of what? Cash inflows, present value of cash inflows that are going to generate from what? The asset. So PV of the inflows of the asset, that's the value we use. Good. Liabilities should also be recorded or stated or recognized at the amount or value at the present value of the future cash outflow. So that's the PV of what outflow. So any money that you are going to pay, any repayment you are going to pay till you clear the liability of present value or those repayments to today's value, that becomes the value of that liability. That is the measurement basis. It's very important. Good. These ones are general measurement basis given to us by what? Given to us by the ISB conceptual framework. When you go to the IFRSs, IFRSs have specific measurement, especially when you take the current measurement for assets, PP. We have the subsequent. We have the cost model. We also have what? The revalued or evaluation model. So we have the specific measurement. This one is a general measurement. And these measurements are, are measurements after the initial recognition. It's also called subsequent measurement. 
all these four measurements are called subsequent measurements. Because if I bought an asset, assuming that I have four values here, I bought an asset 10 years ago, original cost of the asset, original cost, let me make it cost of the asset, is 10,000. Now, five years ago, I bought it five years ago. Now, the current value, the fair value of the asset today is 12,000. But when I should sell this asset, I'll get 9,000. That's the realizable value. It's 9,000. Now, if I should use this asset, I will generate value of, that's the value used of, let's say, 14,000. Good. Have you seen all this value? We are in yes. fifth year, so it's subsequent. We are in the fifth year, so it's a subsequent word measurement. Good. So if I, I'm going to the circle cost, I record 10,000 on the asset. How we get that? Yes. He said? Hello? Uh -huh. Please repeat it again. He said? Please repeat it again. OK. Now, all these figures are subsequent figures. Because we mm. bought the asset five years ago at the cost of 10,000. So these are the subsequent values. So these measurement bases to our subsequent value or subsequent valuation. I hope we get that. Okay. Yes, please. Good. Yes, please. So if I use a historical basis, I will choose 10,000. If I use the current basis, that's 12,000. If I'm using the result basis, that's 9,000. If I'm using the present value, it's the 14,000. How do we get that? Yes, please. Good. So that is it. Now let's move on. It is subsequent measurements. We're going to meet it again. Now let's go to question six. I guess you also a past question. So question six will be yours. Yes. Question six is yours. So okay. let me jump to question seven. Question seven. Required. Outline five objectives of ISB conceptual framework of accounting that seeks to achieve. And state the main content of the ISB conceptual framework for financial reporting. This question dropped uh, recently. I think 2018. And uh, November or 2019 May. Yes. The, the latter part dropped there. D2 D2. The content of the conceptual framework. Down card, they made them ask four of them. They should state just four. So you stating them in any order. You are right. How we get it? Yes, please. Good. So the I the first one, objective of the conceptual framework. When we said that to assist the board to develop financial reporting standards and then to also help the board to promote mm -hmm. international harmonization and it also it mm -hmm. assist preparers national accounting standard setting bodies auditors preparers users it help them for instance, preparers, it helps them to prepare their accounts, auditors to form the audit opinion, national accounting standard setting bodies to also help them set their standards, and then users to help them to understand and make their decision. You are done with the objective. Five of them, you are done. Mm. Then the content of the conceptual framework. What are the content? One, objective of financial statement. Two, Underlying assumptions. Three, qualitative characteristics. Four, element of financial statement. Five, recognition. Six, measurement. Seven, the concept of what? Capital maintenance. You are done. And just explain them. How do we get it? Yes, please. Yeah, so question eight. The ISB framework outline. I don't even read the, the first issue. It's a conceptual framework for accounting the current system of integrated objectives and fundamental principles which describe the nature, function, and limit of 
financial accounting and financial statement. Oh, okay. Now question eight. Explain the four main qualitative characteristics of what financial information, the four. Explain the four basis of measuring asset and liability to the initial recognition. Explain four basis of measuring asset and liability. What are they looking for? Four basis. That's the measurement basis, right? Yes. The same four measurement basis. So after dropping at 20, uh, 2011 or 2013, came here again. 2011. Mm. After dropping at 2011, all the way. All the way, 2011 to 2000, what? 14. 14. Good. 2014, May. The measurement basis. And then the of financial statement, what we did previously over there, the four main qualitative catharsis. Then you mentioned the fundamental and any two of the, the enhancing. Or for the four, we have the reliability, relevance, quick representation, and sustainability, and that is it. Good. So explain the four bases of measurement, measuring asset and liability to the initial measurement or to the initial recognition. They are just asking for the subsequent measurement because these ones are subsequent measurements. Good, now let's go to question nine. In fact, question nine is yours. So question six and nine, they are yours. Question 10. Question 10 says, discuss the standard setting process adopted by ISB to the junior staff, ICA May 2016. This one dropped for the Chartered Institute of Bankers last sitting. No, not last sitting, for uh, 2018. Good. A draw for the bankers 2018 and draw for the ICA 2016 May. So it's the standard setting process, the due process, right? Mm -hmm. The due process, that's the first one that we saw. So these questions are normally repetitive. They repeat itself. I think the language that it changed. Is it? I think the, the language that it changed. The language. Yes. Like the way they put it. Oh, yeah, the frame. In fact, uh, the principle is the same, but how you put the question, technically, we have to throw you away. Look at how they started. As a new qualified accountant with the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. I think that is the next question. made it uh, chartered. Yes, CIB or so. You are asked to make a short presentation to the rest of the staff in the accounting and finance department of your employer who mm -hmm. are themselves yet to join join ICA as a student so they are not even a student of ICA nor members about the standard setting process adopted by the international IFRS sorry international accounting standard board so discuss the standard setting process as adopted by the IASB to this junior staff. How do you get it? Yes, please. Good. So, so the same standard process now. The seven steps you are done. First, agenda consultation and plan of work, discussion paper, exposure draft, revision of exposure draft, new IFRS is issued, adoption of IFRS, post implementation review. You are done. Seven strong points. Is that good? So it came in October 2018 for Chartered of Bankers. Yes, so it was for 10 marks. I think this one too was for, I think, 10 marks or so. B, B, two of the qualitative catalyst information continuing, sorry, contained in the ISB conceptual framework for financial reporting, uh, understandability, and comparability required. Explain the meaning and the purpose of the above characteristics in the context of financial reporting 
and discuss the rule of consistency. Then we said that to enable comparability, there must be consistency or uniformity in the accounting policies when selected. So here they actually you discuss the rule of consistency within the characteristic of what? Of comparability in relation to changes in accounting policy. So try the, the 10B2 for me, this very one. Mm -hmm. And then the rest. Good. And it's continuing. So yeah, that but time. Yes, and I have to read it. I'll yes, yes, yes. Yes. So I'll read it when I get to the office tomorrow. Good. So what I'll do is uh, I'll scan through. This one is May 2017. Okay. I intentionally gather all the questions that I drop on it so far. Except the recent one. The recent one, I have them. That I've not okay. updated them here. The recent questions. So I think I'll gather them, and then push them to you. Now, May 2017, okay. this is the question that dropped. It was for 10 marks. The B part, uh, let me go to the C. The conceptual framework includes a measurement basis for element of financial statement together with the origin criteria. Explain the four measurement bases. So how many times have we seen this measurement basis in these questions? It's like the fifth, the fifth time. Yes, plenty. Also. Plenty. May 2017. Still there. Then question 12. Yes, try question 12 for me. Question 12. Question 12 is November 2017. Identify five points in favor of the adoption of accounting standard. That's the, the importance of the IFRS. Mm -hmm. Then question 13. So, so, yes, 2018 May. That's the last aspect of the conceptual framework. Differences between the financial capital maintenance and the fiscal capital maintenance. That's ICA 2018 May. Good. Then it means that the question I'm talking about is the November 2018. So I don't have the November 2018 here, May, and then uh, 2019 May and November. So these are three sets of questions. But remember last okay. sitting, they asked question like, what is equity? Define equity. Yes. Define equity. And the substance of our form two have dropped before. I think 2018 November, substance of our form dropped, which as I also have it in the question six. The question six that probably required you to do it. Required okay. you contains that. And question 14 is also nice. Substance of form two is inside. A question 15 to is also nice. So all of them are nines. So so that's how far the good Lord will bring us. Okay, sir. So that is it. Thank you. Good. Can you subscribe to the YouTube channel for us? And please don't forget to just tap on the notification button. Just look at the camera there. You can see a bell. Just tap on the bell. It's an every video that we upload. You get a notification. That will lead you straight to the video. Good. So do that and share it to the friends. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. Then for ICA, ACCA, ACIB, SMA, degree, accounting and finance, contact us and then you are safe. Thank you very much for watching. Good, 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 good. Bye.